Legalising assisted dying is a step closer this morning. Following reports, the Prime Minister could give MPs a vote on it by Christmas. Well, it gives hope to Dame Esther Ranson, who has tirelessly campaigned on the issue since she was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer last year. She no longer is giving interviews in person, but she spoke on the phone exclusively to our Dr Hillary to share her reaction. Esther, it's so good of you to talk to me today. How are you? Well, I'm much better than I thought I would be because I've got one of these amazing new drugs which seems to be holding the cancer at bay, to my surprise. You sound remarkably strong today. I'm really pleased to hear that. It's the effect you have on everyone. <laughs> I wish, I wish. <laughs> now, the Prime Minister has promised uh, to try and get this uh, to a vote before Christmas. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm very, very impressed that given all the challenges, you know, national and international, he remembers the conversation we had before the election in which he made it clear that this is something he does feel very strongly about. The law at the moment is unsatisfactory. And being a lawyer himself, I think he thinks it's important that laws should be just and fair and clear, which this one is not. You're fighting for the right of people to choose the manner of their own death, to be pain-free, uh, to die with dignity, um, and to, to save the family having awful memories of a terrible death. Absolutely. And I know from the things that you said that you understand where I'm coming from because palliative care is wonderful, but it isn't always effective. And I know, and anybody who's been in my situation and seen this happen, that memories of someone you love dying in pain can sometimes overwhelm the happy memories that um, you've had during their lifetime. So I absolutely don't want that to happen to my family. I want them to remember the fun we've had, not any terminal pain I might be in. And it was the same for me and, and my elderly mother. My mother begged me not to help her because mm. she understood what the repercussions would be, although she wanted mm. me to, and I mm -hmm. had, I had the chance, but it wasn't possible. And there will be uh, people who are worried about a change in the law. There are plenty of fail-safes that can be put in place so that people still have the right to govern and determine the, the, their own demise. Exactly. And I'm, uh, that's what the Prime Minister said, that he was very careful to make sure that any new law that that is proposed contains these precautions and they must do of course they must of course this affects your whole family as well what what are their views on this the effect of the current law is that if i do have to go to switzerland and dignitas they won't be able to come with me because i would risk them being investigated by the police for having supported me which is all wrong what would you like your legacy to be even if it doesn't happen in my time, I do hope that other people in my situation will be given the choice. That's all I ask, to shorten their death if that's what they want. Your courage and your strength still shines through, so keep up the good work and let's hope that um, the Prime Minister lives up to his promise and you get the legacy that you deserve. Well, thank you so much and thank you for being so honest about very private moments in your own life. Remarkable interview. Hilary joins me now. And you were talking there, you were talking to Esther, you were talking more as a son rather than a doctor, sure. in a sense, weren't sure. you? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it, it was a very poignant interview uh, and it was great to hear her sounding strong um, uh, and as courageous as always. Yes, I, I mean, I talked about my, my own mother, um, who at 97 um, was, despite the best palliative care, was still in some distress at the end. Um, and, you know, people say that one of the problems is that, you know, if we have a change in the law, it will reduce the effectiveness um, of palliative care. But I disagree. I think palliative care is wonderful, but it can't achieve everything. And, yeah. and Esther said that herself. Um, she said it, it can't always take away all the distress that somebody is in at the end of, of their life. So palliative care is still very important. This wouldn't be a substitute uh, for palliative care. It would just give people the right if they're in distress, if they're losing their dignity, mm. and if they've got mental capacity and they make the decision, 
it should be a choice for them no, absolutely. as to get assistance. And we do, we understand the concerns that people have. You know, those need to be addressed and these people need to be reassured. Sure. And I, I respect other people's beliefs, absolutely. you know, their religious beliefs, I respect that. But that's fine for you, but don't you, why should you impose your beliefs on someone else? Sure. That's the thing, isn't it? It should all yes. be a bit choice. Yes. Because I personally, I want to end my life with dignity, surrounded in my own bed, hopefully, surrounded by the people that I love. And to have that choice, that's what it's about. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, one of the objections will be religious, of based course, on and faith, I, and like that's I fine. It, you know? If people have, and mm. faith is important of course it is. In, in medicine, of course it is. Of course it is. Um, but but it, if it's founded on the belief that only God has the right to take a life, mm. um, then that that, cre that creates problems for those people who don't have a faith. Yes. You know, and this is not this is not a mandatory thing. If there's a change in the law, it's just a choice for those people who want it. Exactly. And I'm, I'm not saying we 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 must do we could do anything illegal. We must not do mm. that. We can only follow the law. Um, and and as a son and as a doctor, I, I would always do that. Of course. Um, but I think that the, these objections are not founded on on reality. Uh, you know, mm. I, I think you know the, the either idea that vulnerable people without mental capacity could be exploited because they're vulnerable. I don't go along with that. This is not eugenics that the Nazi no. party used to no, no, practice. No, no, no. This is a, it's about people with sound mind, with mental capacity, saying, no, I've got this creeping progressive paralysis. I don't, I can't swallow. I'm in, I'm, I haven't got continents of my bladder and bowels. I don't want my, my family to remember me like this. Yeah. I've got nothing to look forward to. Sure. I need some assistance to do what I want to do. And it's, that's what it's down to, it's down to choice. I don't Absolutely. want Esther to have to go to Dignitas. I don't yeah. want her to have to end her life in some kind of like really stark little no. room where, it's, you know, she should be in her house surrounded by her kids, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. And look, there, that's are, her job. there are 11 states in America that already have a of law for, for yeah. physician, yeah, they call yeah, it yeah. physician assisted yep. dying, where doctors can provide the medicines mm -hmm. whereby somebody can self-administer mm -hmm. uh, these medicines. We have various states in Australia that are doing it, depending on the part of Australia you live in. Switzerland, obviously, obviously you mentioned yeah. Dignitas, they're, they're, they're uh, able to do this. So I think it is forward thinking. Mm -hmm. I hope the MPs will stop worrying about the, the, the repercussions that they think might happen if there is a change in the law. And the vast majority of the public, I believe, now support a change in the law. So Absolutely. hopefully, um, Esther, if you're watching, you'll get that legacy because it's a really important one. And that would be so important to her. She's astonishing, isn't she? She's she astonishing. She sounded so strong yeah. talking yeah. to you as well. She's amazing. Yeah. And Absolutely. she's one of the most caring people we've ever had. I mean, she, she all the child line she work she's still done. Still campaigning. She's still campaigning. Even now yeah. she's still campaigning. Yeah. Hilary, thank you for that. It's remarkable. Thank you. thank you so much.